Greetings, everyone. My name is Zetterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Mega Man Maker. During the last part, I covered five Virus Made levels. So in this part, I'll be covering at least four or five more Virus Made levels, starting up with this one. Base in the Skies Beta Tree by Night Curse X, with 11 plays and a score negative one. As always, if you want one of her levels to be featured in a future part like this one, please leave both the level name and level ID either in the comment section below or direct message me on Twitter. Also as always, the full disclaimer of this entire LP series is linked in the description below. Also in the description are the timestamps for all the levels that cover these parts. So if you want to check if her level is covered, expand the description. It seems that we're starting the stage to the left side of Shade Man's Manor. We aren't in the sky just yet. We start at ground level. Surprise Cyber Gabiol. Would have liked better advanced warning. There's a key door to the left. And here's the first key. The second checkpoint is located really close to the first checkpoint. I wonder why. Is there a secret down over here? Nope, there isn't. There's our second key. Now I can collect a super adapter. I swear, in some ways, the Beaks are more annoying than the Sniper Joes. I wonder what's down on the right pathway, the one that I skipped past. It's probably for some extra goodies. So far, it's an okay fortress level. Fortress slash special weapon oriented stage. The checkpoint placement of this stage is on the generous side. Maybe a bit overly generous, but I don't mind. As I've said countless times before, I prefer stages with overly generous checkpoint placement over those with checkpoint starvation problems.
a Lights Out segment. I wonder what goodie I would get if I had access to the Drill Bomb. It's probably that pathway that I overlooked. That's why I'm missing the Drill Bomb. Welp, I guess I'm going downwards then. The drill bomb is right over here. I was worried for a moment there that it was an optional collectible. Time to backtrack. A small detour, that is. No, I just need to make it back there alive. Overall, this was a decent level. I do like how the level looped back a bit near the end, where we need to collect the last special weapon, the Drill Bomb. Now it's time to face Napalm Man. He's completely immune against that weapon, that's why it doesn't home in on him. Well, that's something new I learned today. I say I give this stage a 6 out of 10. It was decent, and I liked the second half more than the first half. I did like the level progression of how we started out on the ground and slowly we climbed upward into the base. It doesn't deserve a negative score though. I don't know why I got a negative score. Second level on the lineup is Ice Caverns by Little Mac with 20 plays and a score of 5. I see we're using the assets from Freeze Man's level. We even have the Tri Propeller enemies as well as the Slinky enemies. Not to mention the Punch Blocks. And the Curlingers, good. I've been waiting to face those enemies. In fact, by taking the upper route, I gain access to the Power Adapter and a free tank, all by holding right.
Let's see if this works the same way as it did in Mega Man 6. Uh, didn't work the way I intended. Oh no, fighting the book owners here, this is gonna be a problem. Wasn't too bad, thanks to invulnerability frames. Neat, we have the first instance of this enemy. I expected to see this enemy sooner. We need to wait for it to drop its icicle, which then becomes a temporary platform, and that way we can cross the gap. Okay, I thought I needed to race past the punch blocks, but I didn't. It made this section a lot easier. I could race past them, but it'd be a lot more difficult with those fans. I guess those are for more speedrunner savvy players. Wait, do we have split pathways? I think we do have split pathways. So that's another plus to this stage. I'm already liking this stage a lot more than Little Mac's previous stage. The very hard level without any checkpoints. Let me try out the power adapter again. Okay, it does work the same way in Mega Man 6, where we can punch back the Curlingers. That was a fun activity to do back in Mega Man 6. I'm glad to see that it's replicated here. Uh, ice physics are the worst here, especially when using the power adapter. Thank you for your generosity. Most level designers wouldn't be that generous. The only thing we're missing from Freeze Man's stage is the shattering ice blocks, which shatter over time as you stand on top of them. The closest replacement to them in this engine would probably be the gyro blocks. That's probably a pathway that I overlooked. Yeah, I missed one key somewhere. If I didn't, I could access that secret area where I'd be able to end the stage off early. That's probably where the other pathway links up back over here. So having those alternate pathways does add to the stage's replayability, and the reward for exploring is pretty great.
He didn't seem to have a weakness, but otherwise, he wasn't too bad. It's just the same Shade Man encounter, though with a slippery floor. This is definitely my favorite level of the part so far. Good work, Little Mac. Nice escalation of challenges, gimmicks, and enemies, and nice recombination of assets near the end. Although the recombination could be done a bit better. And I do like how you rewarded exploration if you are careful. Third level on the lineup is Oil Jump by Mega Mr. Toda, with 20 plays and a score of 1. A short stage using the oil slider. This is going to take a few attempts to understand how to do. Because they need to be quick when doing the double air jump here, especially with this limited space. And it's a short level after all, it probably ends after the screen. I can do it, but I can't do it fast enough, so I'd end up not being high enough. It always spawns beneath me, so I'm not sure how to do this. Okay, so I have to spawn it when falling. That's the trick. Just as I'm falling, though. You can see how much I'm struggling here. Once you get the hang of it, though, this stage is easily doable. Oh, I need to do it twice here. This trick is probably done in multiple kinds of levels. Well, you get the idea over here. I won't be able to complete this stage, and the ending is probably at the other side of the teleporter. So, I'll see you in the level editor then. Alright. Here I am in the level editor. The stage gets harder from here on out, but I do like how the level designer placed these squares to indicate where to drop the oil slider globs, and where to jump. This is just too hard for me, and I can already see several Kaiser levels build off of this concept. I'm not that good with the controller inputs, so I can't do it here. It's just way too precise. But hey, it'll be better suited for those who are skilled enough and we're taking off the training wheels over here at certain positions. And that marks the end of this stage. Fourth level on the lineup is ETN 004-Cryogenic Man by Rafa with 16 plays and a score of 6. Let's see how this level fares. Just like the previous levels in the ETN sub-series, I believe that this stage will be at least 60 screens long, three times the length of a traditional level or fortress level. Whoa, that's an interesting combination here. I'll be going through the stage as Mega Man. We have the background from Burst Man stage, first time seeing it here in fact, and a combination of multiple tile sets from Mega Man 7 in the foreground. Looks a bit distracting though, at least for me. We do start out with 7 special weapons. A little bit more restrained compared to Rafa's previous stages, where we start out with an almost full arsenal of special weapons. We will be unlocking more along the way.
The slippery ice blocks are not helping matters with dodging enemy projectiles. I suppose eventually I'll gain access to the power adapter, as there's a whole series of these cracked ice blocks that I can punch through. Unless I overlooked it somewhere, it may in fact be possible because because of the distracting foreground, I may have overlooked a fake wall. Nice introduction of the icicle dropping enemies in a relatively safe environment. All the stages in this part have good checkpoint placement. Good or overly generous. It's been a while since I last played a level that has overly stringent checkpoint placement. Or checkpoint starvation. So that's a plus. People are learning. When I don't have access to the Skull Barrier or Charge Kick, I'll make do using the Shine. Never mind, I have access to the Skull Barrier, I should have used that instead. And this stage is completely doable buster only, just like most of Rayfa's stages. Just need to be careful around the push blocks, even more so than the punch blocks. Oh, rats. Guess I'm going without that E-Tank. Rayva's boss fights at the end aren't too difficult, so I won't worry too much. Thank you, RNG. That's what I was most worried about. Could have been a close one there. Phew, that was close too. Can I get out of here? Nope. By falling in here, I'm stuck, so I'm forced to restart here. Darn, I thought I saved myself, but I wasn't. And of course, because the stages checkpoints are about 11 to 15 screens away, it'll take about a minute or two to get back over there. That means I can get that E tank now, though. I did a tap jump over there, but the game engine interpreted it as a long jump. Hence why I'm always worried of doing those jumps underwater.
Let's try this section again, shall we? This time with less fail. That's the spirit. Just need to make sure I don't embed myself in the ceiling spikes, though. I'm really thankful that Rafa gave me access to the skull barrier. It makes these underwater segments a lot less tense. A lot less tense. I thought for a second that the icicle could pierce through the pole eggs, that's why I panicked a bit. But of course I can't. Unless the engine glitches out. It's a little bit hard to distinguish what the floor is over there, especially with the background foreground combo. I like this stage, but the background foreground combination could use some work. Primarily the foreground. As the foreground tile sets can be a bit confusing. Not what I meant to do there. That's what I meant to do. Is this an optional route or is this the intended route? It seems to be an optional route. Or an alternate route, adding to the replayability. I think it's a ladder. And the two pathways link up with each other, but by taking the upper route, I gain access to an M-Tank. Not to mention, this is the faster route. If this was Freeze Man's stage, I'd be sure that these blocks, these ice blocks would crack. But they don't. They're just there for show. And have ice physics. Nevertheless, this is the end of the stage. A decent fortress stage. Iceman fits over here. After all, this was a medicinal slash ice stage. Well, this stage is called cryogenic man after all. So this place is used for cryogenic freezing, so this fits with the medical slash frozen team. And ice can be rather fragile, hence why the Night Crush Maze just smashes right through him. This would probably be my honorable mention of the part. Good work, Rafa. So, fifth and final level of the part is Wily's Revenge Fortress 1 by Sonic Bionicle Master, with 28 plays and a score of 8. Let's see how this compares with the regular Wily's Revenge levels, as those could be a bit subpar. Outside of Part 4, which was... almost okay to okay. 
We start with a boss door to the left. I suppose that's the entrance to this fortress. So these teleporters launch us upwards. The enemies though, it's assumed you understand how they work already. But this is a fortress level, so that's okay. Need to time our jumps carefully here, so we don't fall into the spikes, or ram into the spikes. Kind of reminds me of enhanced mobility in Magmal 2, but a bit easier. Neat way of making the Komoso Bros a bit more difficult, put a conveyor belt right in front of them to speed up their tops. Although this segment can be a bit more difficult, because the difficulty progression on the stage is... It's not going upwards. It feels like it's getting more difficult and easier than more difficult. Like in this point, this was easier than the previous spike... Uh, than the spike elevator segment. This feels easier than the previous segment where we had to climb upwards through a series of spikes. We should make this harder than that one, to fit with the stage's difficulty escalation. Like here, this fits a lot better. Didn't react fast enough, hence why I died. Thankfully there's a checkpoint right over here because the level designer knew that players would die a few times. Because there's a slight change in the mechanic where going to certain teleporters will take you to another teleporter instead, not directly out of the one you got into. Definitely reminding me of Enhanced Mobility, or whatever that Tier 4 or Tier 5 stage was called. Already this feels better than almost all of the stages in the Wise Revenge series of stages. Good checkpoint placement, okay difficulty progression, and nice set of challenges. Now we're using gyro blocks. Would like if there's more variation with the background though. It gets a bit repetitive seeing the same background over and over. Nevertheless, this marks the end of this stage. It felt about 25 to 50% longer than your traditional fortress stage, but it works. Although I'd cut out that one corridor with all those teleporters, that one broke the pacing and, and difficulty curve. This stage can safely do without it, because we already had one of those segments before. Cutman with a coil platform and junk platforms. Or junk blocks, I mean. Just want to test out which special weapon is best against him. It's either the Leaf Shield or the Hard Knuckle. Probably the Hard Knuckle because that's the closest equivalent to Gutsman. It is. This was a... 5.5 out of 10. I'd like more elaboration on the teleport gimmicks, more sections like where you have to climb upwards through those spike walls, and less of those monotonous segments. Focus more on that and maybe the Jar Block segments 
uh, shorten those up as well because they were getting a bit repetitive near the end. And this stage will easily get up to 6 or 6.5 out of 10 under my Mega Man Maker standards. So overall, out of the 5 levels I covered in this part, my favorite level would definitely be Ice Caverns by Little Mac, with an honorable mention going to Cryogenic Man by Rafa. So in the next part, I'll be covering several more Veer's Made levels. Well then, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Toodles!